Escape from Tarkov is a complex game with a lot of complex systems, from ammo, armor, ballistics, to crafting, traders, factions, reputations, bartering, and all sorts of stuff like that. And in that complexity, there's a lot of things that the game doesn't really tell you. So here are 10 useful things that Escape from Tarkov doesn't tell you. I gotta do my quick shout out real quick. If you're new to the game and you're looking for people to play with or just looking for questions to be answered, our Discord server is probably one of the best places to be. There's tons of people in there. There's people that'll help you with quests. We have amazing looking for group channels. It's a really good place to be. That link is down below. And I'm also streaming Escape from Tarkov about six days a week over on Twitch. That link is down below as well. But we can go ahead and jump right into number one, and that is quick looting. Looting is one of the most stressful parts of Escape from Tarkov, and we want to be doing it as fast as possible. If you hold Alt and click on something, it will automatically equip it to you if you have an open slot. So if you don't have headphones and you're looting somebody with headphones, you can Alt click it and it'll automatically put it on. If you Control click something, it will automatically put it in an available space in your bag or rig or on your person. So you can just Control click everything you want to put in your backpack, Alt click anything you you want to put on and this makes looting much much quicker this also works in your stash when you're just gearing up to go into another raid or when you're dumping things that you found into raid into your stash number two is canceling animations one of the worst feelings in tarkov is being stuck in either a healing animation or a reloading animation you hear somebody coming and you can't quite get the reload off in time and they push you and you die well with certain guns like shotguns or with all the healing animations you can actually just hit left click or kind of spam it if you're a little stressed and it will eventually cancel the animation if you hear somebody coming you can cancel an eating a drinking or a healing animation and with certain guns like shotguns where you're reloading one bullet at a time you can cancel midway and then just use whatever bullets that you've loaded into that gun number three is kind of a general combat tip you will hear this a lot from veteran players and that is right side peak so because your gun is shouldered on your right shoulder if you're peeking around the corner peeking to the right much less of your body has to be exposed to get your gun around that corner and give you vision on your enemy. If you're peeking a left angle, you have to push all the way out so that the gun on your right shoulder can pass by the wall and give you an angle. This means that in PvP especially, but even in PvE, if you're pushing a left angle, so much more of your body has to be exposed and it gives them an easier shot. So whenever possible, take a right side peek in combat. Number four, another combat tip. A lot of people don't realize that lasers in the game actually reduce your point fire spray. So point fire is like hip fire. It's when you're shooting without aiming down sights. And if you're shooting a full auto gun without aiming down sights, it'll obviously bounce around a little bit. Well, well, if you attach a laser, if you can find one and attach a laser on your gun and activate that laser, it's going to greatly reduce the spread of your bullets when you're point firing. This has also worked with flashlights in the past. Sometimes they change it and flashlights don't work. Sometimes they do work, but for sure, lasers will greatly reduce the spread of your recoil when point firing. So a lot of times when you're in close quarters combat or if you're clearing a building and you're going to be really, really close and you don't want to ADS on somebody, using a laser is going to help a lot. Point fire is already really, really strong in Escape from Tarkov and having a laser engaged makes it that much better. Now, number five is related to movement. You actually have a ton of granular control over how fast your character is moving or how high their stance is. So you can move forward and if you press C, you can crouch your character. But if you hold C, and use the mouse scroll wheel, you can actually adjust how high your crouch is. But this is incredibly helpful in getting a really, really tight angle on something. If you're hiding behind cover and that cover is a little too tall for you to see over when crouched, but you don't want to be standing and exposing a ton of your body, you can hold C, scroll down, and find some really, really good angles, minimize how much of your body is exposed, but still get vision on the target. And then you can also actually use the mouse wheel without holding C to change the speed at which you just walk. So just hold W. If you're not sprinting, you can scroll down on your mouse wheel and it will gradually reduce the speed at which you're walking. You can see these little markers vertically for crouching and horizontally for your walking. And then there's also a little speaker icon there. And the faster you walk, the more noise you make, the slower you walk, the less noise you make. Tip number six is all about repairing. So all the armors or helmets in the game, if they get hit, but you don't die, they lose durability and you can actually repair them. Now, this is a really complex system on the durability of the armor, what the material is made out of, what was the armor penetration of the round that shot it. That's very complex. I've made videos about it before. I'll probably update those videos, but just suffice it to say that if you make it out of a raid and your armor is busted, you can right click on it and hit repair. Now, what a lot of people don't know, because it's kind of buried in there, is that you can click the drop down menu and repair with proper skier or mechanic. Now, proper is going to repair for the cheapest, but he won't repair it as well as skier or mechanic. And it kind of flows like that. Proper skier is a little bit more expensive, but he will add a little bit more durability when repairing it. And mechanic is the best. He is the most expensive, but he will add much more durability. Now, this is kind of a game you play with each armor, depending on what the armor is made out of will determine how well it repairs. So there are plenty of instances where a proper for much, much cheaper repairs it almost exactly the same as mechanic or skier. And there are other instances where 
proper will barely repair it at all. And paying the extra money if you want to use that armor is going to greatly add to that repair. So just know that and kind of play around with it. Every time you go to repair an armor, you decide how much money is worth and how much of that repair is worth for you to want to use that armor again. But it is there and it is very, very helpful to know. Number seven is all about weapon jamming and how to clear them. This is very, very annoying if you don't understand it. If you pick up a scav gun and it jams on you and you just can't shoot it, the game doesn't really tell you how to handle that situation. So if you double click on a gun, you'll see a durability up at the top. They have changed this before and it wouldn't surprise me if they changed it again with this patch, but around the 90 to 95% durability mark is roughly when a gun can start malfunctioning. If a gun is a lower durability than that, the gun has a chance to malfunction. We don't know what that chance is. It's super random and it's just really kind of RNG. If a gun does malfunction, you will not be able to fire that weapon again until you clear the malfunction. You clear a malfunction by pressing L and then shift T. L is to inspect the weapon and then shift T will actually clear the malfunction. Now you can use the weapon again. Obviously, the lower the durability, the more frequently this is going to happen. You can repair your guns in your stash just like armor. So this happens as infrequently as possible, but be aware of your gun's durability so that you can know if this is coming or not. The other type of malfunction that's in the game is overheating. And at any durability, this can happen if you just keep putting rounds after rounds, you know, high capacity mags and you're just mag dumping something full auto. Eventually, the barrel will just overheat and that will be its own malfunction as well. Number eight is blind fire. While you're in a raid, if you hold alt and W, you will actually kind of put the gun over your head to do a blind fire. And if you hold alt and S, it will actually kind of blind fire around a wall or around a corner to your right. These are really cool features, but they're definitely not something to rely on too heavily while in combat. However, especially if you're playing in a squad, you would be really surprised at how many PVP engagements will kind of stall out if you shoot back. If the person that is shooting at you starts taking return fire, a lot of times they will turn around, they will try and get to cover because they're trying to figure out where they're getting shot from. So if you, especially if you're in a squad, if you guys are taking shots and somebody's behind cover and can just blind fire over or around down a hallway and just start spraying bullets, that will oftentimes buy you some time to either get your whole squad to cover or to reposition. So it's definitely something good to know that the game doesn't really tell you. Tip number nine is you actually have a quest inventory. So there are a lot of quests in the game that make you go and get something and either survive that raid and then go plant it on another map in a separate raid or even go get something and plant it somewhere else in that map. There are a lot of reasons why you might not be able to do that all in one raid. If you got a really bad spawn and you have to go to the other side of the map to get the item and you don't want to run all the way back to the other side of the map, you can just go ahead and extract with the item and then come back in. Or if you're doing one of the quests that require multiple maps and maybe you get the item but your friend doesn't, he dies. What you can actually do when you're out of raid, you can go to your character go to tasks and you'll see this task inventory. If you have that item that you haven't either planted or done something with yet, you can actually transfer this to your quest inventory in your stash. And that means if you go to a different map and die, you haven't lost that quest item. So maybe you got the item, your friend didn't, you transfer it into your quest inventory in your stash. Then you go back in with your buddy. And that way, if you die while he's trying to go get the item, you haven't lost it. And then when you're ready to go either plant that thing or turn it in or do whatever, you then pull it back into your person's inventory. You transfer it back then you can go plant it. If you forget to bring it back, you won't be able to plant the thing, but that's fine. You can just do it the next raid. Not a lot of people know about this. There's not a whole lot of quests that use this, but it can be super helpful. And coming in at number 10 is you actually have a lot of different ways to customize what is shown as kind of like Tarkov's HUD. So if you just go to settings and then go to game, you can see a few things here. And each of these things has an option to basically have them always hidden, always shown, or have them pop up when you need them and then kind of auto go away on their own. So you have the quick slots, which is what you have bounds to all the numbers on your keyboard, the stamina and stance. I have that on auto hide when I'm manipulating those things it will pop up so that I can see. And then eventually it will kind of disappear. Same with health condition on auto hide. That means if I get shot, it's going to show me where I got shot. It's going to show me, you know, how much damage is in my leg, if it's blacked out or something like that. But eventually it will go away on its own. Some people like to have this always up so they can always have that information. Or if you're going for the really immersive thing, you can just always hide it and just always have to kind of like check your health in your inventory and go that route. So play around with this, find something that you like. A lot of people, especially if you're new, keeping as much of this as always on as possible can really, really help you at a glance, just figure out what you need to heal, where you have that heal bound or something like that. So I really, really hope this helped get you kind of started off on the right foot in Escape from Tarkov. There are a lot more things that the game doesn't tell you. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like a part two to this. Uh, if you like the video, think about dropping a like or subscribing to the channel. That helps me out a ton. Like we said before, our Discord's a really, really good place to be if you're new. And I stream Escape from Tarkov six to seven days a week. All my links will be down below. If you're interested in more beginner's guides, I have tons of videos here and tons of playlists. So you can click on any one of these and they will help you out. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will definitely see y'all on the next one.